Hey everyone, PKBAG here with another video. This time we're going to go and take you on that boat ride. We're going to take you way out in the water. You're not going to be able to see land. It's going to be kind of crazy. We're going to go deep into some statistics and then we're going to take you back. It's going to be a nice ride. Anyway, let's get started. Today we're going to look at some differences between thermoformed processing and cold layer processing for paddles. We're going to use John Q's numbers. As of 113, his database went up to 122. It was 78 back in November, so he's done quite a bit of work adding to his database. Sample size is sufficient and includes power and pop in mile per hour, which is why I like to use his versus other reviewers databases. I'm not going to read all of this here. This is basically an overview. You can pause it if you want and read some of this, but this is stuff you can find on the internet. It's information regarding the difference between the process. The little photo I have is uh, Doug from Bread and Butter. He snapped a paddle in half. He broke it over his knee. I mean, but that was an issue, I guess, with some of the earlier uh, paddles. Uh, where there was a weakness there and there's actually footage of let's see Riley Newman he's playing a match doubles match hits a volley breaks his paddle breaks off of the handle and he's standing there with the handle in his hand it's kinda comical he's wondering what's going on he hits a volley the paddle face drops into the kitchen and the ref calls a fault on it because that's that's because you can't be in the kitchen <laughs> with the volley I think it's hysterical I couldn't find the footage I would have added it um, but anyway here are some differences between the two manufacturing processes in the database we're looking at the differences we have uh, John's got 82 paddles thermoformed or hot molded but cold only has 33 some of the averages include price, so thermoformed is more expensive uh, by quite a bit. And that's an alarming difference right there, to be honest. Spin, there's quite a difference here. Thermoformed at 1961, cold layered at 1703, power 54.7, 52.8, pop at 34.7, 33.3. Now, I didn't add swing weight, static weight, twist weight, because those came in very close between the two. And this video focuses on power and pop, the differences between, um, the statistical differences between power and pop amongst the different types of manufacturing. So is there a statistical difference between power and pop? Well, we use analysis of variance, and the null hypothesis states there is no statistical difference in power between the two types of paddles, alpha set to 0.05, which is pretty standard for analysis of variance. We're looking for a p-value of less than 0.05, and our averages for power don't seem different a lot. I mean, they're not, they just don't seem hugely different, but, but that's why we do the stats, because the averages can only take you so far. Our p-value was definitely below 0.05, so we can conclude that there's a statistical difference in power between thermoformed and cold layer paddles. All right. We do the same thing with pop. Averages don't look all that different. Um, thermoformed is higher, but not by much. And the null hypothesis is that there's no difference between thermoformed and cold layered. Alpha set to 0.05, and we're definitely below 0.05 for our p-value. So we have a statistical difference. We can reject the null and conclude that there's a difference in pop statistically speaking between thermoformed and cold layer paddles. Now what's that mean 
uh, for the consumer. Well, um, a lot, but does power and pop mean a lot to you? And, you know, are you willing to spend more because the average of a thermoform paddle is 194 and the cold layer is 142 That's a big, that's like $50. So the next test I decided, let's see if power and pop correlate uh, within a, a manufacturing type. So we're going to talk a little bit about what correlation means. Um, correlation numbers range between negative 1 and 1. A negative 1 is uh, a correlation where you have the opposite Go, one goes up, the other goes down, you know, in a pretty extreme manner. So in this case, it, power were to go up, pop were to trend down. I mean, that doesn't make sense. I was just giving you an example of a negative one. Zero would be no correlation, and one would be a positive correlation. So this is an example of positive correlation. So as power goes up, pop also goes up in general. You know, you've got your trend lines and then no correlation anyway. I hope that makes sense. hope that makes sense. Amongst thermoformed paddles, we have an R value of 0.42 and the website I used when you throw all that all the data in, it said it was a medium positive relationship. I do have a chart to show you. It's I don't think it's the best way to show you uh, but amongst thermoformed paddles, all of the blue values are the pop in mile per hour in ascending order. So from left to right, they go low to high. And I guess what the correlation shows is that pop values trend uh, slightly up as you get more, as you get higher onto the the power. All right. Probably could have used a better uh, visual there, but that's okay. Now for cold layered, the R value seemed higher. The website said significant large positive relationship. I don't know about that, but the chart doesn't look great either. Um, and keep in mind, from the lowest to the highest in power, we're we're between fifty and fifty five. You know, pop seems to jump around. We've got a few that are low in value. And I would say, though, in general, as you get higher in power, the pop values tend to average a little higher. So we have some takeaways. Highest power value versus cold layered. We've got 53, so that's the highest mile per hour power value for cold layered, which is nothing special for a thermoform because the number of thermoformed paddles with power above 53 is 55. So there's 55 paddles that had a greater power than the highest power cold layer paddle. I hope that makes sense. Well, I have to I'm not going to say that again. I think we did it right. EVA foam paddles rank the highest, but they're unapproved for tournaments. There's two listed, and the average price is pretty pretty big. I mean, it's just a huge difference in price between the two. Thermoform paddles now also have quality control issues. So breakage, I think, is not, you know, what it used to be, and uh, I think there's other issues that, that come about here and there. So it's not, it's not the end all, be all process. We do have some examples, I think. Let's see here. So these are the highest power for cold layer paddles, and Valer takes the cake there. We do have Diadem in there, Groovin, 
and prices are all over. I mean, there's some at 99, there's, there's some at over uh, $200 there. And those are cold layered process ones with the highest power. Highest power thermoformed and we've got our gearbox models. Now see these two at the top, the Diadem Vice and the Ronbus EV, those are the EVA foam models. They rank highest in power. But we do see a Honolulu and a Groovin and the Proline Energy S. We've seen these, so it's nice to see some different models in there. All right. On the other end, we're looking at the most expensive cold layer paddles. Uh, Diadem's in there, uh, Selkirk, and some others. It's, it's across the board. You could pause it and read these. I'm not going to read them all. The cheapest thermoformed paddles. Now, you might be interested in this. The cheapest thermoformed paddles. We've got three from Hudef. By the way, I'm a rep of Hudef. You can see the link in the description. If you're interested in anything from Hudef, my discount code is Andrew15. Everything's in the description there. I just wanted to throw that out. Speed Up and Honolulu, Vatic, and 11624 around that list. And they're not bad, 99, 120, 130, 140. It's pretty reasonable. So that is, this is where we're, the boat's coming back to shore here because we want to see some real names. We want to see some real numbers here, not just stats. And I have a challenge for you. So we could do correlations. And my challenge for you is what correlation do you want to see between feature and price. Do you think there's a certain feature that once it's added or not added to a paddle increases the price? Or do pricier paddles happen to have, you know, I don't know, grittier surfaces? Something like that. Hey, let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you like what I do, you know, please subscribe. Um, share the video. I appreciate it. And uh, the next time you play, tell someone they made a nice shot. See you later.